Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, my name is Marta Fierro. And um, if y'all can pull up the guide that my husband shared. I just wanted to share this with you. I'm, I'm going to interpret. And I know many of you know Spanish, so y'all don't need interpretation. Uh, but Dale Fierro, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's our logo. And it's something that God gave us. Uh, basically, um, I'm running to be the next state representative for House District 145. And that was not in my plans. <laughs> it, was, it was just like, you know, Sister Ruth was saying right now, and, and, and her husband Tim, and uh, the Parkinson's, my gosh. I felt like I was at a concert, just angels around. You know those concerts that you pay so much money to see Bethel, and you see all these people? I felt at this moment, right now, this morning, I just felt all that anointing on y'all. And y'all, you know, like your husband was sharing with us, you know that you have a purpose, but you don't know what it is at some point in time in our lives. All of us, we walk around, we ask the Lord, what's our purpose? What's our calling? Lord, but he has one. He has one. And, and let me tell you, um, I always wanted to be like, Sister Ruth, you know, I always wanted to sing. <laughs> I always wanted to have an angelical voice, you know. Um, and, and, but I didn't get that, you know. <laughs> I, I also wanted to be very soft-spoken. I wanted to, you know, you know those ministers and pastors like, like Sister Ruth, I'll put you on the spot now. Like Pastor David Hope, they're so soft-spoken. And, and I always like, Lord, every time I would pray, it would always be like, Lord, da, da, da. and I'm going, why am I like that, Lord? Why? I want to be, I want to be like Pastor David Hope. I want to be like her. I want to be soft-spoken. And, and sometimes I would feel mocked, you know, because I just took it long, you know, our pray, my prayers. And, and, and then when the Lord called me for this, it was like I said, I was not groomed. Well, the Lord groomed me, right? The Lord grooms us. I was not like wanting a position of a power Politics, you know, you heard what politics means? Politics, yeah, you heard? <laughs> I'm gonna say it. What is it called? Many, poly is many. And what does it say? Blood sucking, yes. <laughs> and I was like, I don't wanna, no, I don't wanna be that. I, I've been a minister, me and my, my husband, and I have been minister for 20 years under Gulf Meadows Church, praise the Lord. And we love that. We love serving, helping the community. And one day the Lord opened up a door for me to work, you know, at a part-time job to help one of my daughters finish her college and send money off to her. And I was like, perfect. And then I even asked, can I evangelize? And they're like, yes. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting paid for evangelism? What? <laughs> knocking on doors, talking to them about the governor and talking about church. What? I mean, come on, my own hours, my own time. And I was like, yes, yes, you know? And so then I started getting paid for, you know, working uh, for the governor's campaign. Little did I know that that was a preparation that God had for me. God, that was preparation, you know? And after that, I did so well that I was offered by a Faith and Freedom, I don't know if y'all heard of Faith and Freedom yeah. Coalition. I was offered a position as an associate director for the Houston area, and I took it because the people that were actually helping me in uh, all the volunteers, they were able to get paid, and a lot of them, you know, they came from families that, you know, did not have a lot, you know, they needed extra money, and all the team was able to get paid, and one of my daughters became also uh, an associate, you know, director there in that company, but little did we know what God was, was doing, you know, and so in November, we decided, hey, you know, it's Thanksgiving, politics is over, you know, November 3rd, they voted for everybody, it's over, and then I get a call, and the call was like, you know, Martha, the Senate District 6 leadership, you know, for this involves Senate District 6, um, we're calling you because we are nominating you to, you know, run for Texas Senate. And I'm going, wait, hold on, what? What are you talking about? I'm going to, I'm going to go to South Padre Island. I, I'm going to go visit my father-in-law for Thanksgiving already paid. Wait, what? Everything in my head. Wait, you must be wanting my husband, not me, because my husband is into politics. I mean, I was into politics, but not like what they were asking for. I was like, I'm, I'm the minister. I'm in the 
back. I'm praying for people. I'm the prayer warrior. Politics? What? And yes, that crossed my mind. Many sucking, yeah, what he was saying. <laughs> Poly ticks, right? Blood sucking ticks. Yes. So that crossed my mind. And I'm going, what? But then the Lord said, calm down. I had, you know, spending time with the Lord. You know, it was a different devotional because this is this year's. And uh, spending time with the Lord, he goes, go back to your journal. Go back to your devotional. And look at it from January. January, guys. This was November. Look at it from January. And I started looking, looking in my, in my devotion on word after word after word after word. The Lord was saying, that's where I was taking you. So we started. We started and we had four weeks to campaign. Yeah, 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 exactly. I did that. I opened my mouth like, what? Four weeks and $4,000. That's all we had. $4,000. And my opponent had $500,000, the incumbent. And the second incumbent had $400,000. And they had been campaigning for a year now. And I said, what do you, Lord, okay, whatever you say. You know when you hear that word, that music and the song where it says, here I am, Lord? You know that, that worship song? How, how, how do you say it? Uh, here I, yes, here I am. But there's in Isaiah where it says in the word, and who can I send? And you say, here I am, here I am, send me. That's what I said many, many times. I didn't know he was sending me to Austin. I didn't know that was his plan. I wanted to go to Guatemala. You know, like, you know, Brother Tim said, I wanted to go to Honduras. I was like, yes, yeah, send me, Lord. But he was sending me to politics, <laughs> to Austin, where I have no idea what was that. But what I did know was the word of God. What I did know was this book. That's, and the Lord said, that's all you need. So after that, we came very close. 54 boats shy of winning. Yes, there was corruption. Yes. No, really? No, yeah, there was corruption. Right? And I didn't win. And then my campaign manager uh, which is such a close friend of mine. You know, she accepted the Lord. She got baptized. She had, the Lord had a purpose for her too. And, uh, and uh, she said, okay, you have 24 hours to cry. And then you're going to go and uh, Yeah, that's how she told me. I was like, wait, wait, what? Yes, 24 hours to cry and do what you need to do. Eat ice cream, you know, get depressed, whatever. And then you have the second race. And I was like, wait, what? What second race? House District 145 State Rep. And I'm going, wait, 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 hold up. Second race, wait, nobody told me about this. It's like, no, well, now we're telling you. And so you're just going on to the second race. And I'm going, okay. So, of course, I had to tell my family, hi, we're going out to the second race. Now, remember, we campaigned for four weeks. We knocked on how many doors, guys? I know y'all counted because they were the ones knocking on the doors with me. Yes, my kids, my, 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 their friends, yes, they were knocking doors. Yeah. So, so, so when we, when we did all that four weeks, I had to go and tell them, Hey, by the way, I know it's freezing cold outside cause it was December. Now we're going to second one, you know? And they're like, wait, we didn't have Thanksgiving. We're not having Christmas. What, what? And I'm like, you know, the Lord's just talking to us. So we went to our second one and I went against nine Democrats, nine. Yes. And I was the only lonely Republican on the ballot. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, and I lost. <laughs> Cheaters. So I said, well, they put two people that were very, very uh, well known in the Democrat. And my district is Democrat, I'm just going to tell you. It's like 80% Democrat. So it was like they put both of them. So that took me out. And then the last two, they went out to our runoff. And of course, I mean, all along, they wanted that other person to win. And I was like, okay, okay, Lord. Now, come on. What are you doing to me, Lord? Have you had one of those moments where you go, Lord, what are you doing to me, Lord? Here I am to worship you, Lord. But what are you doing to me? Come on. No Thanksgiving, no Christmas. You know, what, what is going on, Lord? What, what are we? And the Lord started opening doors. The Lord started opening doors. And then the Lord, 
made me the national faith advisor for a national organization. Then I started working with them. And then the Lord closed that door and he sent me to one, to one that had had to do everything with pastors. And then the Lord sent me to Washington DC to the White House. And then here I go, okay, Lord, you're opening this door, opening this door, opening this door. And this is what's happening. And this is why you're involved. And the churches need to rise up. And the churches need to be the one taking over. And the churches need to do this. And the church, and I was like, and I started going to all these churches. Oh, door opening, opening doors, opening doors. And then the Lord said, by the way, you're going to do it again. And I said, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. That's all I can do. Before the pandemic, I questioned, did I hear you right? I mean, I'm a person that is, to me, a nobody. Like, I'm a minister, yes, I understand that. I, 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 have, I have the Lord, I can hear his voice. But in politics, I'm a nobody, I'm no one. Who is this person? You should have seen me, they were interviewing me at one o'clock in the morning. Who are you? What do you eat? What do you drink? Does your husband beat you up? What? No. We need to know this because uh, apparently the ones that were running the, 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 the same party, they had skeletons in the closet. Of course they did. And so they wanted a woman, a person of integrity. That's what they told me when they chose me. Do you know why you were chosen? Because we needed a person of integrity. And I was like, okay. So this whole past year, we've been working with many churches and the Lord's been sending us to the White House, right, Pastor David? The Lord has been sending us with men and women of God that roar in prayer, right? Yes. And it's amazing what God has been doing. And so I started again and running, and this is what you see here before you. I am the Mexican born, because I was born in Mexico. <laughs> Immigrant, Texas race, the United States of America, proud Latina. And the Democrats are going, what? Wait, 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 you're an immigrant. You're supposed to be a Democrat. No. No, 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 but you're a Latina. You're supposed to be Latina X. I don't know if you guys have heard that. No. I'm a woman of God. I know where I stand. This is holy ground. My mama taught me when we got here, she said, do not touch the cheese, the government cheese. She said, you do not touch the cheese. And I was seven years old. She said, we earned the cheese. We pay for the cheese. Do you not touch the cheese? Do you understand that? Because we came here to bless this country. We came here to assimilate. That's a bad word now. You guys know that? Assimilate. Oh my God, don't say that. That's a curse word for the Democrats. Yes, assimilate. You assimilate because you're coming into this country and there's a reason why you left your country. And we see that in the Bible many times when Ruth and Naomi and everybody, they left, they left and they went into what? And they follow God's voice. And so I am blessed to be in the United States of America. I raised my children to know that this is holy ground. I raised my children to know that we bless it and that we earn and that we're hard workers. I've taught my children and, and the rest of the mentoring group that we mentor that we bless this because we are people, we are men and women of God. And so the Lord urges us to bless this country, bless Israel. So we stand with what the word of God says. And so I wanna share that with you. This is my logo, my slogan, Dale Fierro. It's a very um, popular word in the Latinos, because Dale Fierro, que my last name is Fierro, right? Which means iron in Spanish. It means iron, iron sharpens iron. And Dale means give it all. So when people are kind of depressed or sad, or they're going through something, you know how you say, just go for it, right? Like keep going, you know how you say that? Okay, well in Spanish you say, Dale Fierro. Ain't that nice? It just kind of goes with my name. So when we minister to people and we tell them about my race, we always say, dale fierro, and they remember that. They're like, yes, dale fierro, and I'm like, so when you go to the ballot box, you're gonna remember my last name, right? 
So isn't God, God's amazing. He's just totally amazing. So that's my picture, and that's the little elephant that, you know, represents the Republicans, right? Can you move it up a little bit? And then it shows you, can you move it down a little bit? It shows you my values, you know, different pro-life values. Um, thank you, fights for religious freedoms, stands against human trafficking. You know, last year, those things were not that popular, you know? Like for, like, you know, I, I got a lot of advice and people were like, what are you doing? Why are you, why, I know you defend pro-life, but why are you putting it in your stuff? Why, why are you telling people? I'm like, oh, excuse me? But, you know, a lot of people were advising me, you know, campaign people, politicians. They were like, why you put, I'm like, because that's what I, what I am. That's what I am. And now more than ever in this year, with this whole pandemic, with everything that is happening, now more than ever, those values, everybody's running to those. And I hope they believe them, but I sure do. I sure do, because I stand on the word of God. So this is what's going on in my life right now. How's yours? <laughs> I have about 180,000 people I'm supposed to be, you know, talking to, and they're supposed to know me, but uh, I think we've only got to 50,000 of them. I need 30,000 votes. A piece of cake, right? Praise the Lord. When the Lord's involved, it's a piece of cake. So yeah, so how's y'all's life? Amen. When we came in here, my, uh, that's my testimony. <laughs> uh, so I want to just ask you to pray for me. Pray for me uh, because we're in it. How many more days for early voting? October 13 is early voting. Yes, October 13. Soon, yes. And we have a lot of things going on, lawsuits and things like that going on uh, because they want to do, uh, they're going to have 24-hour 24 hour uh, voting, yes, polls. Yes, I wanna share that with you. And they're having it also at the Energy. Yeah, Energy Arena and the Toyota Center. Yes, and we need people to help. We need people to be out there. We need people to be involved in the voting so that people do not cheat. Because when we have a person that stands for the word of God and has integrity, they will look around like they're watching. What is that word in Nehemiah? What is that word that you are what? Watchmen on the wall. Watchmen on the wall. We need watchmen on the wall to be involved inside the polls. Because there's a tendency that the other political party uses to bring people to that side and they'll lie and they'll do whatever. And we need to be those watchmen inside of those places. So I urge you to get involved and I'll give you some information. But you know, this morning the Lord gave me a word. I wanted to share my testimony, but the Lord gave me a word uh, for y'all. And let's go to Isaiah 59, 19. One of the things that God was speaking about was what is the condition of your heart? What is the condition of the heart of the United States of America? I mean, we, we're, we're fighting for the soul of the United States of America. And, and what do we stand as a person, as a society? Who dictates what are we to do? Who dictates our standard? Who dictates our morals? Who says this is good and this is bad? We as children have to have a standard. And so if we can go to Isaiah 59, 19. We as a family have to be something to measure ourselves as. We as a society have to have an order. We have to have guidance. And the standard definition, I looked it up this morning, it says the usual procedure protocol that is set to action in a particular situation. There's universal precaution standards. There's protocols. There's standards, you know. I mean, uh, EMS has standards. Firefighters have standards. The police have standards. The hospitals have standards. And Isaiah 59, 19 says, From the west people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. There's other versions of the Bible where it speaks of the standard of the Lord. I don't know if anybody has it on there. Uh, I think I read it in King James Version. Is this King James Version? Yes? Oh, you're gonna, okay. In King James Version, and I have it here. This is uh, NIV. Okay, okay, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun? When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up 
a standard against whom? Him. Okay? When the enemy comes, like a flood, the Lord will what? Rise up and place a standard, a standard. It means that the Spirit of the Lord will put them to flight. What does flight mean? Running, exactly. We have to have a standard. I say this because, and I want to remind you, because when we came into this pandemic, thousands and thousands of people were lost. Did y'all notice that? I'm sure y'all weren't. I know that. I know your pastor. Y'all were not. I know that. Chaos was at the door. Fear knocked down the door of government, businesses, houses, hospitals, and place of worship. But what did we do as Christians in that moment that you heard the news? Do you remember? A lot of people, you know, we, we just passed the, the memory of 9-11. And, and, um, of and a lot of us remember where we were at in 9-11. We remember. If I were to ask you, where were you in 9-11, you would have an answer like that. So where were you at when you heard the news, COVID-19? Did you prepare yourself or did you run? Did you kneel before the Lord? Or did you call your pastor, your minister? Or did you listen to channel 11, 12, 13, 14, CNN, and blah, 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 blah? Yeah. Right? So I know your pastor, therefore I know his children. Okay? I know your pastor, so therefore I know his children, how they move. I know how y'all moved. But a lot of people, they listen to channel 11, channel 2, channel 13, and CNN, and they were lost. Now, let me just share with you. I don't know if you guys know that your pastor is an author. How many of you guys know your pastor? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Do you know he has a great book? Pastor, can you tell us uh, the name of your, the title of your book? Unveiling Satan's Plan to Destroy America. Yeah. Okay. Raise your hand if you read it. Oh, you're good. You're good. All the rest of y'all need to talk to your pastor because that book is right now. Right now, what we're going through, he knew this. How many years ago, Pastor? Uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Four years ago, your pastor knew this. I was, I was, in the, I was going through the pandemic, and uh, right before it came, like, you know, it went, everything went chaotic. The Lord told me, go get, go get his book, because he has given it to me last year. You gave it to me last year before we went to Washington, D.C. together. And he, he, I want you to read this book, he said. And I said, okay, pastor. And of course, you know, you just get your book and you don't read it. You know, I mean, you guys are here. You're the members. Yeah, I haven't read it. But yeah, uh -huh, shame on you. <laughs> Anyways, I love you. Uh, but I, I, I didn't read the book. And when it was about to, you know, the pandemic, the Lord said, go read the book. Go get the book. Go get the book. Go get the book. And he kept, you know, I would see something. Go get the book. Go, it's right there. Go start reading it. You know, I was reading another book. He's like, go get the book. And then finally I obeyed the Lord, you know, and I'm like, what's going on? I like, I need to. And I, like, that prepared me so well, your book, you know. I mean, so well. It's so good. I mean, he is discerning your, you guys have, I mean, you have the voice of the Lord here, you know. And so go get that book, please. And I'll stop. Okay, go get the book. How many of you are going to get that book? Yes, amen. Oh, look at that. Amen. Okay, now I'm going to stop. Oh, he is the book. Well, get the book first and then he'll preach it. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you, what did I do? Uh, when we found out, when we heard about the pandemic and, you know, it was in China, it was barely starting, like in China and all that, my husband and I received a word from God. And... Um, and the, Lord, and the Lord spoke to us, you know, uh, in December. Did we go in December to? You went the first trip, right? We went the first trip. Okay. So in December, I was taking another group of pastors uh, to Washington, D.C. And I got very sick. I got very ill. And the Lord, and the Lord told me, go get your antibiotics. Go get, he told me exactly. Um, by the way, I used to be a nurse. My husband's in anesthesia. So the Lord was like, go get what you need to get before you go on a trip because you are going on the trip. And I said, okay, Lord. So I went, got my antibiotics, everything. At the moment that I knew my body, that I knew what was gonna, about to happen, took the antibiotics, kept going. I, I don't think I felt the muscle pain because 
It was 36 degrees in Washington, D.C. And never had I been, like, you know how sometimes you say, you want to go to Colorado, I do that to my kids, I want to go to Colorado. But I don't know what I'm saying sometimes because, you know, <laughs> we live in Texas. We live in Texas. You know, the coats are totally different. My gosh, you go to these places where it's really winter, and my God, these coats that cost you so much are like worthless. And I went, and we were sitting there in the train track going from Baltimore, Maryland to, to uh, Washington, and we're freezing. And I'm going, this is the worst thing, <laughs> you know? And I was like, all of these women, pastors and ministers, we're just huddling there and waiting, and the train had messed up, and this had messed up, and, I, and we're there, and I'm going, Lord, this is, I don't like winter. I want to go back to Texas. I don't like it here, you know? And so, and I think my body was actually going through the pain of the muscle, but the winter, the cold, the freezing cold, did, you know, it just like kind of shocked it. So I wasn't feeling the pain of the muscle or anything that COVID symptoms have. It was the freezing cold I was feeling. So we went through the whole thing. And, and let me tell you, when you're sick, the Lord just lifts you up and keeps you walking and prompting. And I, you know, I didn't have fever. I didn't have any of those things, but I knew my body was ill. And I took my antibiotics, took my steroids, did everything that I needed to do, uh, took soup, everything, right? I come back you know, in December, I come back home and, uh, and my husband, you know, starts talking to me. We start talking about again, about the COVID and, uh, and then we sit down our kids, um, in January and we start talking to our kids, you know, when the Lord just prompts you and, um, we start telling them, okay, so this is what is about to happen. You know, uh, your dad is going to end up having more hours at work. Um, I'm a retired nurse. I might have to go back into the medical field. Um, we told our, you know, our 25 year old, I said, uh, you have a federal job, so you're okay. <laughs> and we told our other daughter who worked for a nonprofit, uh, you're working for a nonprofit? I'm sorry, you're gonna lose your job. <laughs> so we had a very, you know, and there, yeah, she's looking at me the same way she looked at me that day, like, what is going on here, mom? And so we were preparing our children for what was about to happen. Because the Lord had told us, the Lord is our standard. Amen. The Lord should be in all of us, it should be our standard. I know he is here. In your families, it should be the standard. He's the standard. I don't go to channel 211, I see them. I go to God. I need God to speak to me. I need him all the time, all the time. And so the Lord was speaking to us and we were communicating to our children. And then it was so beautiful because one of my children, um, my youngest one, he said, mom, we're going to be okay. And I said, okay. And you know, of course, still doubt starts creeping in. And I said, and we, we already had prayed and everything. And, and he goes, we're going to be okay. Cause you gave me, um, you spoke to me on my, you spoke about my life, you know? And you gave me a word that God gave to you. And God spoke to dad about my life. And what am I going to be as an adult, mom? I'm supposed to be a baseball player, mom. So we're going to be okay, mom. I'm going to be okay. You know, I'm going to see. And I'm like, whoa. I'm glad he had that assurance and that faith that he was going to be okay. But that kind of like, you know, it woke me up. And I was like, yeah. Like, yeah, I gave you this word. But think when we put that in our children when we speak over our children's life in a moment like the pandemic or anything that's happening or any financial situation when we speak these words that god gave us at the moment when we're going through trials it it is brought back up it's lifted up and the children will remind you you spoke over my life you said these words so we're gonna be okay we're we're gonna be fine he did say, at least I am, but you know, because <laughs> I gave him the word. So, so that's one of the things that we go to that standard as nurses and, and medical uh, personnel. You know, we have standards and protocols. It was really hard to see. I know my daughter came to me and told me that one of her, oh, and by the way, you know, I, I, I got healed by the Lord, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord, you know. But, but the thing is that I, I did not go through what other people had gone. I can't tell you that I tested for this. I can't, I can't, you know, because this happened.
happened way before everything was happening here in the United States with COVID-19. Uh, but a lot of people have said that they've gone through things. They didn't know. They got, you know, they went to get tested for strep. Then you have strep. They went to get tested for flu. One, two, three, and four. You know, there's many flu strains. And they were, they were all negative, but they felt sick, you know. And they did what the standard was, was take antibiotics, uh, take albuterol, take your Tylenol, things like that. But when the COVID came, people all of a sudden, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what a fever was. It's like they lost it. I know we had people calling us and saying, you know, I went to get tested and I'm positive for COVID, but you know, I have 104 degree fever. And they told me not to take anything. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, whoa, wait, what? They said that, you know, that my body's going to fight it. Not 104 degree fever. It might fight it, but you need some assistance of some Tylenol. You need assistance of getting in the shower and, and, and you know, taking a, a shower, tepid water, bringing that temperature down because you might get epileptic seizures. People lost it. Medical personnel lost it. I mean, some of you guys have lost it still. Just letting you know. You guys are losing it. I had one of my family members who had a strep infection. Strep infection. She went to three doctors. They misdiagnosed her. We could know. We knew. I'm, I'm a nurse. I'm not a doctor. I knew that it was strep. The doctor couldn't tell. The second doctor couldn't tell. The third doctor couldn't tell. When they were taking her in her wheelchair to the COVID-19, uh, yes, to the COVID-19 floor, and they diagnosed her with COVID-19, not with strep, they were taking her in. We were in there intervening. Get off. Get off. Get out. Get out, because you don't have COVID-19. You have strep infection. You could see all this had swollen up. The infection in itself, the pus had already, you know, it, the, the stuff on there had already had come out. And so it was all over her neck and this was swollen. Her lymph nodes were swollen. We know what the standard is of strep. Why did these doctors not get it? She jumped out of that gurney, yes she did. Yes, and she said, and, now we, and we told her, AMA, against medical advice, you have a form. And praise the Lord that there was a nurse that actually understood what AMA was. She got out and we sent her to a doctor in Dallas. Her, her name is Dr. Yvette Lozano. She treats COVID-19 patients outside in her clinic, outpatient treatments. They walk in, they can't breathe, they have all this stuff. In two hours, they're out with the medication that she gives them, the antibiotics. She's a woman of God, let me tell you. And she knows that there's a standard that you have. There's a standard. We already know what a high blood pressure is. We already know what a fever is. We already know as medical personnel, as nurses, we already know. Then why are we not doing anything? And it has happening over and over again, not only in medical personnel or nursing or hospitals, it's happening in places of worship where they shut down. And they say, no more. Excuse me. People need healing. Did we forget? The blood of Jesus. Yes. Exactly. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. I have a funny story to share with you. You know, my kids, you know, how I'm going to bring them up. And I told them, I'm going to bring y'all's name up. So my 13-year-old, you, know, uh, you know, we had to wear the mask to go to, uh, to the store. And of course, you know, I'm live, right? Okay, never mind. So, uh, so, <laughs> so, so when we go to the store, I tell my kids, make sure you wear your mask, make sure you wear a mask, and you know, and uh, it's like now a purse or something, you know, wear a mask. If you don't go to the store, wear a mask, you know. And so my daughter goes, Mom, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. What are you talking about? <laughs> Because we're always saying that, you know, the blood of Jesus. Every time they, if they get sick, backache, whatever, you know, the blood of Jesus, you know, the blood of Jesus. And so she's like, I have the blood of Jesus. I don't need a mask. So I was like, okay, I like that. You know, I like her rebellious. But praise the Lord. So what is our standard? What is our standard as Isaiah says? The standard of the Lord, the standard of God. And we must not forget what his word says. You know, as medical personnel, as nurses, we have our skills, but we have God. And we ask him for a plan. We ask him always for a plan. 
Now, let me tell you, how many of y'all stayed home when they told us to stay home? Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> so when they called for stay at home, that's when my husband and I noticed that our ministry work just tripled up. It just tripled. The Lord called us to start doing food distributions. So we started doing food distributions and we started laying hands over people. They need a prayer. They need it. it our, our, our food distributions uh, were increased from 100 to 200 to 300 to 400 to 500 to 600 to 1,000 families. We were seeing, and there was not only like one family in a car. There was like three or four families in a car. So I know our numbers were greater than that. We just had one this past weekend on, uh, on Friday, you know, and we, 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 we prayed and we talked to over 500 families. And you know what's the most important thing that they need? It's not the physical food from the boxes. It's the spiritual food. It's the anointing. It's the presence of God. That's what they desire. And so as churches, you know, I am very, very blessed to be here. And I thank God for meeting Pastor David Hope and his beautiful wife. And I'm, I'm, I'm awfully just honored to be before all of your leadership, you know, and Minister Ruth and her husband because of the fact that you guys carry that mantle. You carry it and you carry it so well. But now you know how the Lord speaks to us what we have to do and we have to discern in these times. And I really believe that the answer to all this it's the church. It's not a political party. It's not. We're not going to get saved by the Democrats or Republicans or Independents or Libertarians. or not. No, we're going to get saved by Jesus. Jesus is the answer. And how is he going to get to the people? The church. The church. So I want to go ahead and go to um, 1 Peter 3, 8 through 15. If you have your Bible, please open it to 1 Peter 3, 8 through 15. Finally, all of you, okay, I can read it from the screen. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion, one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, pit, pitiful, be courteous, not renting evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call, that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh youth a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. My God told us to go and pray and lay hands and be the hands and feet of Jesus. There is a lot of people, a lot of people that will not come into a church we know that, right, as ministers. But there's a lot of people that are in need and in help spiritually. And so we must be the hands and feet of Jesus. And Jesus is going to give us, he's going to give us a plan. And I know that Minister Ruth told us, she said it earlier today, and God is going to use you. So let me tell you, just as the Lord opened a door for me, and he said, okay, now you go and ye, you go, and you're gonna go and run for this race. And I had no idea what was to come in 2020. We're talking back in 2018. I didn't know what was about to happen in 2020. We have to understand and discern the times that we are in. And what we're supposed to do, as the word of God says in 1 Peter, whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. 
They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. You are the righteous. The church is the righteous. And this is, this chapter is coming, uh, coming out of uh, the book of Peter where it says suffering for doing good. Standing up to the persecution. Uh, sometimes we forget that the apostles, you know, or anybody that we speak of, Esther, Deborah, anybody, you know, say somebody's name from the Bible, David. They went through persecution. We love the fact that we are one with the Lord, but we don't like the other part where the persecution part comes in where we get mocked, joked about. But we have to understand that we have to go through it as well. Right now in San Francisco, um, I don't know if you guys are aware of what is happening in San Francisco about shutting their churches. I mean, uh, the young people, they're going into the churches and they can be ticketed 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. We heard from other, one of the pastors this week that one of the biggest church in San Francisco, the pastor itself, I think it's up to 50,000. Is that what he said in the, when he shared with us, pastor? 50,000 fines, $50,000 $50, in fines for opening his church. And yet he keeps opening it up. He keeps opening it up because the government needs to understand, government needs to understand that the one in charge of this is God, the creator of heaven and earth, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, not the politicians. And as children of God, we need to understand that God is calling us, calling us into these positions. Maybe we don't want to go, believe me. But the Lord is calling us into these positions because they were rightfully ours as Christian men and women. They belong to us. Do you understand that? The foundation in itself was what? For Christian men and women of God. And, and, and as a church, we have forgotten that this is our position. And we have let evildoers take control of this country. Take control of what God proposed from the beginning for us. And shame on us. Shame on us. Because we do not do what God is telling us to do. We simply don't even go vote. Jesus. It's too far. It takes up my time. I got to get out of work. And let me tell you, your vote is your voice. It's your voice. So when you do not vote, you're not helping anyone. Yes, there is evil out there. Yes, we feel protected in here. Yes, we feel the, the, the presence of the Lord. But do you think that the Lord just wants to be held here? No, no the Lord wants to be out there. And who, who is he going to use? Us. Send me, Lord. Send me, us. So when I'm running for this position, do you think it's just running to be a politician? No, it's the word of God he's sending out. The word of God. Because when I'm out there and there's somebody sick, I lay hands over them. When I'm out there and somebody's having depression, I pray for them. When I'm out there and somebody does not have a church, oh, come here, let me talk to you. I have a perfect church for you. Think about it. So we should be out there in charge. We should be in government holding positions. And let me tell you guys, you young people, young people, my goodness. I'm, I'm looking at you, Eduardo. Don't go to sleep. Okay, that's one of our young, uh, young men from our mentoring program. Let me tell you guys over there crouching over with an Adidas shirt. Yes. Hi, guys. You guys, my God. If you want for the Lord, he can use you in a mighty way. Right. In positions of government, I don't care what your grades are in school. The Lord can give you wisdom and knowledge. And you're like, what? Because he knows that your heart is with the Lord. He knows that you love God. He knows that. And so we have to wake up. We have to get involved more in civic ministry, get involved more in things of what God wants us to be out doing out there so that later on the churches are not shut down because of fear-mongering authority. 
because they're fearful because we forget sometimes that the blood of Jesus doesn't cover us anymore, right? Is that right? Yeah. During a pandemic, the blood of Jesus doesn't work? That's not true. Right? Yeah, exactly. The stripes of Jesus doesn't work anymore. I mean, it works on everything else, cancer, arthritis, heart problems, uh, knee aches, back pain, but the, the stripes of Jesus don't work on COVID, right? Because that's the message we gave clear out when we decided to close our churches. And, and, and right now, still churches are very much closed. The fear came over. Fear came over. Like the flood. Like the flood. It came over. Isaiah. Like the flood, the fear came over. It just came. Terrified, Terrified everybody. Close the churches, close the businesses, do this, do that. You're going to get fined, you're going to get fined, you're going to get the COVID, you're going to... What is the word saying? The evil word, you're going to get it, you're going to have it. That is the devil himself, liar and deceitfulness. The devil's a liar. I hope that's what everybody answered. I know y'all did. The devil's a liar. I'm not getting COVID. The devil's a liar. I'm not sick. The devil's a liar. I am still the child of God. The devil's a liar. My church will still be open. The devil's a liar. So we have to. So we have to stand up. Stand up. And know the standard. Know the standard. I'm going to close with this. As a Christian, three points. First, get closer to God. Be holy. What's in my heart that doesn't align to God's word? You have to ask the Lord to take it out. During this time, okay? During this time, we have to ask always, but right now even more, right? Are we discerning the times? Okay, pray fast. God, take it out. Take it out. Jealousy, anything, anything. Fear, take it out. Negative thoughts, my business is not going to be, you know, my business shut down. It's never going to come back. It's never, no, 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 stop. Just stop. Turn it around. What does God say? Number two, know your word. Will you fight or will you fly? Will you run or will you hide? Will you take a stand or trust God? Will you serve? Will you lay hands? And let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. To close, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. I know I keep looking for it, right? <laughs> okay, 2 Timothy, okay? This is going to be a long one, guys. But we're going to close with this. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. How many of you have read that? Yeah. Yes? Okay. People will be lovers of themselves. This is where we are right now here, folks, okay? Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Yes, I'm talking to you, youth. I'm pointing you out, yes. <laughs> disobedient to their parents, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, I love you though, I'll pray for you. Okay, ungrateful, come on guys, you know I used to be a young person too, come on, you know. I was disobedient to my parents, I was. I'm gonna be honest, yes, all of us were, right? Then we repented. Okay. Ungrateful, unholy, without love. Unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Oh, oh. Have nothing to do with such people. Run! <laughs> run! Run! Have y'all seen Matthias movies? Is it Medea? Run! <laughs> get away! Pray for them. But get away. They are the kind who warm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women. Oh, we got to talk to women now. I talked to you, now we're going to talk to women. <laughs> who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as, and help me with this, Jonas and 
Jambres, a post Moses. Someone said Moses, or was it, did you say? Noah or Moses, you said no. So also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected, but they will not get very far because as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. I think, I think the Lord needed to put Democrats. I'm just kidding. But they will not get very far because as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Are we seeing that right now? We are so seeing that right now. I mean, we turn on that television and we are seeing left to right slander, deceitfulness, evilness. I mean, right now they, you know, like I shared with you earlier when someone told me, why are you putting that you're pro-life? Oh, because I am, you know? I've been my whole life, you know? And, and, but then some people, you know, they, they uh, are running for certain positions of power and, and they're, you know, last year there was something, this year there's something else. Deceitfulness, you know? And, and then they also want to be the ones in charge, which is authority over the church as well. And we have to be very careful with that. Very careful. It says, but they will not get very far. That's, that's a wonderful, wonderful word from God. Okay? Because as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Everyone is going to know. Everyone's going to know their evilness. So they will not get very far. And who do you think brings out all that evilness out? The, the year of the pandemic of 2020, who do you think brings all that? All that that's hidden will come out. Where does that say in the scripture? Do you remember? All that is hidden will come out. Yes. Exactly. So that we, we the church, knows what decisions to make. We know what to do. And so a final charge to Timothy, it says in uh, verse 10, you however know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. And in fact, everyone who wants me to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. What did it just say? Did y'all hear that? Yes. Did we hear that? Yes. Okay. Did y'all hear that? The young people? In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That's in your Bible too. I'm just letting you know, okay? But as for you, continue what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scriptures is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So put a little line on their parents so that when your kid next time tells you, you're so mean, you say, yes, he gave me permission. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> That's right, baby. I can rebuke you. I can exhort you. Pastor. That's what you did. Drop the mic, baby. There we go. Go talk to him. Because that's what the scripture is saying. Yes. That's what the word of God is telling us. And I'm going to tell you something. We are equipped. You guys are equipped. You guys are equipped. Yes. Gosh, you guys are equipped. Yes, we are. Right. So guess what? What's the next step when you're equipped? Go out. Ah, you got to go out. See, I didn't know I was equipped. <laughs> I mean, I know I was equipped for the ministry. I didn't know that I was supposed to be equipped for other things, you know? Like, like the minister said right now, we were wanting to go to what? Honduras, Guatemala, <laughs> missionaries. And the Lord said, it's music. 
And, and let me tell you, you guys are so anointed in your calling. Thank you so much for bringing down the presence of the Lord. And your pastor is here is anointed in government. In government. Both of them. Yes, pastor. Yes. I'm talking to first lady. You're anointed in government. You will counsel many in government. So what does that mean? That means that the rest of y'all are going to receive from them because you already have received. And so when the Lord places a word, can all of us stand up now? When the Lord places a word in your heart and you're like, no, 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 but I don't know anything about this. I, I have nothing, like, I don't know. It's okay. Just, just go to your pastor. Just go to him because he's already been equipped for all this. It's a mighty, mighty, mighty encounter, mighty presence of the Lord in this house. God has mighty things for y'all. And the Lord has equipped you and he has chosen you, each and every one of you. You and the ones who are falling asleep. Each and every one of you, God has chosen you. And God's going to begin. He's going to begin to move you. And I'm so excited about what God's going to do to y'all. I'm so excited. I really am. I'm going to.